So let's talk about the NBA's awards. And no, I'm not going to get into who should win what. We've been talking about that all week. I want to talk about the actual awards. Because let's face it, a lot has changed since these awards were created. For starters, NBA League Pass did not exist. There were no advanced stats being tracked. No NBA.com to look those stats up on. So for so long, people were voting with just a much different, much more limited pool of information. And by the way, the game itself was different when the awards were created, too. As the NBA's rules have evolved, a three-point line's been added here, hand-checking goes away. What makes a player valuable, or even just good, has also evolved. But the awards, well, in so many big ways, they haven't evolved. I mean, sure, the NBA has added a couple satellite awards here and there. Five years ago, they started a Best Teammate Award. 22 years ago, they put in a Sportsmanship Award. But the main awards, the big ones, those have remained largely untouched for decades. The Rookie of the Year Award we've all been arguing about, that was created in 1952. And we've been told that Ben Simmons is a rookie because he didn't play last year. And hey, that is the criteria I voted on. I voted for Ben because the award, according to the rules right now, he's qualified. But when was the last time someone really looked at that? Maybe it should be that if you get hurt and miss your first year as an NBA player, it's just bad luck. The same way if you get hurt two weeks in and miss the rest of the season. Remember, the contract side of things works differently. Ben didn't have to reset his rookie contract with the Sixers and do year one over just because he was hurt his first year. No, he is firmly in year two right now and gets to be eligible for an extension the summer before year four. So should the rule for the award be changed to match that? Hey, I I'm not sure, but I'd like to know that it's being considered. I'd like to know by who. And if they decide not to change it, I would love to know their reasoning. Not because this is life or death or the Spanish Inquisition, but because we're all really interested. That, that's a scary graphic. Because we're all really interested <laughs> in this stuff, and we spend a lot of time on it. Those of us who vote for awards really treat it as an honor. We take it super seriously. I have an embarrassing amount of spreadsheets on my desk right now as I try to nail down NBA votes. And you see that money next to me because I also know there are incentives in player contracts based on these awards. There's a lot of cash changing hands off of these. In fact, I want to talk about All-NBA for a minute because that could use some evolving too. The NBA still makes you vote by position, even though the game has evolved to be so largely positionless. So suddenly I have to decide if I'm putting Anthony Davis at center instead of forward, or Joel Embiid at center. And by the way, this will make a huge difference to Embiid because he gets an extra $30 million in his mm -hmm. next contract mm -hmm. if he makes first team all NBA. Well, Coach Alvin Gentry doesn't have to decide if AD is a center or a forward. Why should I have to? And then there's the MVP award. You know how I feel. This is our most important award, what we use to compare the most elite, elite, elite players across the span of history. And yet the criteria voters are using has totally changed. With the rise of advanced analytics, MVP has strayed away from who's the best, most valuable player, who is the guy you would pick if you absolutely had to win a finals game seven tonight, and instead has become largely about whose statistics measure best in a particular 82-game stretch. And by the way, that is a cool thing to base an award on. It's just not the same thing as who was the best player in the NBA. And other leagues, the NFL, the NHL, they've changed their award system to acknowledge that. Those leagues now have separate scoring awards, which has allowed MVP to return to who's the best player in the league. And by the way, you don't have to agree with me on MVP in particular. It might never change. But there should be some change to some of these awards sometime. The sport evolves. The league evolves. The awards should be able to also. And I know I have some converts up here. Trace, where are you on this? And which, which awards in particular? Well, you, you guys have actually won me over on the Rookie of the Year award. Um, meaning if a player's hurt his first year and he comes out his second year, like Ben Simmons mm -hmm. is having right now. Before, I was like, no, he, he shouldn't be eligible to win Rookie of the Year because of him going through a season and understanding, you know, what the NBA is really all about, travel, scheduling, and things of that nature. Um, but my gripe in our league is the MVP award. You know, you talk about Major League Baseball, you talk about NFL, both of these leagues have a defensive player of the year, you have an offensive player of the year. Sounds like Rachel's and, case. And you have an MVP. Why can't we have, we already have a defensive player of the year, why can't we have an offensive player of the year, which clearly James Harden is the best offensive player this year. But LeBron James and what he's accomplished this year with less 
and in his 15th year, have sh has showed that he's still the best player in our league. He is the MVP. James Harden is the best offensive player of the year. And then you have the defensive player of the year. I can't. I can't say anything else. I, I feel the exact same way. Well, Rookie of the Year is interesting, by the way, because I, I get, I think it's the inconsistency that is getting people so frustrated. It's not whether Ben had an advantage last year or didn't, because by the way, Ben has all kinds of advantages. He's 6'10". This is not a fairness league. Everyone has advantages when they walk onto the floor. Yes, that was an advantage. That's not a disqualifying advantage. But it seems weird that if he played two minutes, he's not a rookie. If he played two minutes and got hurt on the court, then he wouldn't have been a rookie this right. year. But since he didn't play those two minutes, he is a rookie this year. So it sort of seems like it should change one way or the other. Either it should change that, hey, if you get hurt your rookie year, you get hurt, that's bad luck. You're not eligible for rookie of the year. Go win everything else for your next rest of your career. Or it should be like baseball has a minimum number of games that you have to play to be a rookie. And then if you play that and you meet that, then you're eligible for rookie of the year. But if two minutes in, you get hurt then you don't. I mean, in, in one way or another, then it, these awards, it's just, do you want to look at them? Is there a mechanism to look at them? And should that be public so we I all know what it is? I seem to think that we might have talked about this the other day. Um, didn't, we, didn't we talk about this on the hot mics the other day? Guys? Are you going to show? Oh, boy. Didn't we? I thought is we this, did. Is this, is this something you've arranged with no. producer Dave? I haven't producer arranged it. Steve? Dave arranged it. But hey, we had a conversation it, so. about this, you know. I know. They pick up things right here. <laughs> Man, no one wants us to have any fun. No one wants us to be great. Um, no, but seriously, they have to, they, they really have to switch that up because what about I mean, the rookies? You I don't think you're wrong. No, I'm talking about MVP. Um, MVP. Thank you. I think they should get you a drum that you can literally bang on about the, on the MVP. MVP. Yeah, like, I don't know where it would fit. <laughs> I'm like, why are we showing old video? <laughs> Ask for a drop. I think this is, I think it's amazing. Ask this is, by the way, I believe receive. this is producer Danny's first on-camera oh, appearance hello. on the jump, is it? I, right? I, hello, hi, producer Rachel, Danny. You All right. Ask for a you are. You don't get it. I ask for a drum, I get it. If you want anything, you should just tell me what to ask for. I'll get it. This is amazing. Thank you very much. I am thrilled about this. This is exciting. Boom, I get to no, bang the drum. No, you beat the back of the so, drum. I mean, the back of the drum. Where, where are you with this, what I said? Uh, I'm in absolute agreement with you. Um, but yeah, again, I'm Mr. Reality. Uh, as much as you want to beat that drum, um, I don't think the NBA, I think the NBA enjoys the fact that we have this debate. We're having a conversation, yeah. But and it's, you got to leave it up here, Rachel, just for, for whenever you need to use it. Oh, you never know how long we're going to use it. Well, I think you should keep it up year-round. It's, it's hiding, yeah. Rachel. I, well, it's okay. I don't, um, I don't think the NBA honestly wants to change. I think they love the fact that we talk about it like this and uh, that it becomes an issue several times a year. And it's a... Uh, well, I spoke to our friend Tim with. Frank at the NBA this morning, and we were talking about this. And Tim Frank, you, they, you think I'm no fun? Tim Frank is no fun. Tim Frank Fun. He's an he works in the no league fun. office. He's I'll one of our liaisons in the media. Right um, he says that they do sort of, they have conversations about it. He says it's not a formal committee. It's that if somebody sort of brings it up. And my point to him was, and, and that's totally fair, but my point to him was, a lot of times you need a change agent to create change. Like the All-Star game was particularly horrible, and therefore they changed the All-Star format. The awards, you're not really going to get some sort of huge event, not with the way the awards are voted on, that kind of thing. So my, my call would be, hey, can we have a more sort of formal mechanism for looking at changes? Because you have an award that, again, 1952, Rookie of the Year was instituted in 1952, all NBA, which you and I have to sit there and vote on, and got $30 million in Joel Embiid's contract. The NBA is largely positionless. Shouldn't all NBA yeah. awards be largely positionless? This stuff has to get looked at. They have at. moved that way in, in all-star voting where it's three front court players and two guards, and it's a difficult situation, especially if you're like Kyle or if you're like Carl Towns, you're trying to get on the all NBA award yeah. to get paid down the line. But we're putting Anthony Davis and Marcus Aldridge at the center. There's no room for him. It's a rough situation. And I want to be clear. James Harden is this yes. year's MVP. Absolutely. Uh, wasn't because, because that's how the award is set up right now. Right. But right. you are saying, as I am saying, as Brian, you have said, it's just not set up right. No. So I voted for James Harden. I didn't feel good about it. I, not because of James because I felt like we were being unfair to LeBron. Which but is also, by the way, unfair to James Harden. 
Because he right. earned an award this year with what he did. Absolutely. So it shouldn't be muddled. And I, you're right, people like to argue, but they can argue even if there's two separate awards. That's true. You can argue over James Harden. You could argue over LeBron. I know Paul Pierce will tell you KD, he thinks, is the best player in the NBA right now. There's, there's always going to be able to be arguments over this. Mm -hmm. It's just let's argue over the right thing where we know we're, we all know what we're all arguing over. Let's just start there. I think it'd be good. Uh, we got to get to this fact because Kyle Kuzma, one of my favorite, favorite rookies in years, really, is here. So we're going to let him get set up up here. I'm going to bang my drum a lot. Stay with us. Bang like T Max. Air it out. Bang that drum for years. Who's coming? Woo!